everybody, it's Paul Ramsey back with Dr. Manny St. Victor for the fifth of five videos about uh, different parts of the brain and starting to kind of create a, a common language between you, our audience, and, and for me and Manny to talk about the parts of the brain that we think are going to come up over and over again in the developmental issues and, and topics that we talk about with people. How you doing, Manny? I'm doing great. How you doing, Paul? I'm good, man. Look, I found this picture. I'm very excited to share this. Uh, now, I had heard of, today we're talking about the uh, anterior cingular cortex. Yeah, and I, and I, cortex, yeah. Yeah, the ACC. I had heard of this, but I, had, I didn't really know anything about it. I had heard just a little bit about it. So here in yellow, correct? Yep, yep. And it surrounds the corpus callosum. Like they say, it looks sort of like a collar. I, yeah. Know, yeah. Yep. I so guess this is, uh, is we're talking like kind of in the deeper, deeper part of the brain, like like yeah. down in the center more. Yeah. Yeah. Down in like the deeper bark. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because remember, cortex is bark. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So, um, what does this part of the brain do for us? Um, now, it's been, it's been called at times the seat of free will, okay? And I'm, I'm not having that argument. <laughs> I, I just want to put that out there. But it's, uh, the key thing is that it's associated with error detection and conflict. Uh, it goes uh, awry in situations like obsessive compulsive disorder and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADD. Um, so... You get uh, ERN, error-related negativity, which is a firing when uh, you don't get the feedback that you expect. Expect A large part of um, uh, your agency comes from your brain makes a prediction of what will happen if it does something. When it happens, the brain is not surprised. When it doesn't happen, the brain is surprised. When the brain is surprised, the brain doesn't like being surprised because death is yeah, so Brian, let me interrupt you and clarify real quick there for folks. So when you say conflict, you don't mean like like drama between people kind of conflict, but more that when an expectation is not being met, yeah. that sort of feeling of surprise that is a conflict of I'm not getting what I expected. Exactly. It's okay. uh, and the best another frame to think about it is um, reward based learning. Oh, okay. So learning from rewards. Um, so with the error-related negativity, when you expect something and you don't get it, you get like a, a blip on ERP. Uh, it's worth, since the um, ACC deals so much with ERP, I'll just give a quick snapshot. ERP is an EEG, electroencephalogram, mm -hmm. where um, they put it on there and uh, it's a stimulus-based one where they watch like uh, the pre P300s and the various things that let it know that you are conscious of something. You know, there's a spike when something enters, a stimulus enters consciousness. There's also like an N400, which is kind of ACC typical, which tells you you didn't get what you expected. Now, I'll give you a funny example. Is They said Shakespeare used to write his stuff to trigger that N400. Uh, and, and it's for negative, so it's like a, a negative blip in the e event-related potential. Um, so with Shakespeare, he would say things that contextually you weren't expecting to hear you know he he would um, do a lot of verbing and he was he was you know he loved neologisms so you'd be in the audience like never heard that used like that before so that would trigger um, like the error related negativity okay uh, what what other things to consider um, those, so those even like like as simple as um putting food in your mouth and expecting it to taste one way and it not? Yeah. 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 Now, what's, what's important to think about here is the ACC, you can kind of imagine it as being, uh, just conceptually as being part of the kit associated with the line between mindfulness and mindless behavior. Okay? Um, if you, by and large, you run these scripts all day. Like when you're drying your back with a towel, you're not thinking angle left, arm, thumb, grip. 
you know, whatever. You you have a habit. You do it every darn day. But hopefully, you do it every day if you're washing right. You know, you pop, you throw it back there. You you know, you do the script and then you stop. You're in the shower. You're not sitting there thinking the whole time about the angle, the temperature, whatever. If suddenly the shower goes super hot, that's conflict. It's like, and your brain goes from whatever script is running. It it it's a script interrupt type of thing. It's like oh do something, you know, do something. This is not what I expected. Surprise. And so consciousness kicks in at that point. So you can actually make a decision as so you can adjust the outcomes. So that's the error related and reward related learning. Okay. Yeah. Error related and reward. Because either way, it's, it's, it, it has to be right. It has to be either an awareness of getting what you want and or an awareness of not getting what you want and it's all taking place that makes yeah. sense okay yeah. all right so um so i just my, i'm just spinning a little bit cuz i'm like so there's a it's got me thinking about how much like i said it could be as simple as having some ice cream and expecting it to be the way you thought and it not and so you'd be like oh that's not or it could be having a conversation with your romantic partner and expecting what you say to get a certain response mm -hmm. and it not. And you're being like, well, that wasn't what I, I was hoping for at all, right? Like there's so many ways. I'll give you one better. It could be writing down something that you don't believe. Ooh. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's... And you take for granted because you do it all day long, constantly doing things, and and so much of what we do, like you said, we do and we get what we expect yep. in all these little simple ways all day long. There's so much going on there. Yeah, yeah. And wow. I think there was one experiment where they they changed a guy's doorknob. <laughs> you know that something as simple as the fact that you know you walk in. You, you you grab your doorknob, you open your door, you don't think about that. But if you grab, if you change my doorknob, and in the flow of autopilot, it doesn't feel the same in my hand. Yep. That script, without me having to be like paying attention to my doorknob, is like the doorknob feels funny. Right. It fires off, and then awareness kicks in. That's it's sort of, uh, I guess, another frame for it is an alert response. You know, you get a little acetylcholine bath to attend to something. Yeah. All right. What would you say is the single most important aspect of this part of the brain for, for people? I mean, there may be, maybe that's just not an unfair question, but like, like why did you choose? Because when we did this, I said, you tell me about the parts that you, like, what's the essence to you? I know you've told us the essence of what it does. But to you, what's like the essence of this part of the brain that's so important for people in a real practical everyday way? It's what you do right after you get the feedback that determines who you are, basically. Okay. Okay? Yeah. yeah. You, you, there's this thing where when you're conscious of something happening and you have a place for it and a name for it, you instantly have a little bit more control over it. It's name it, tame it is what... Uh, Dr. Siegel, I think, Dan Siegel, um, called it. Um, so the sheer fact of saying I'm angry or I'm sad, it, it clarifies it. It distills the emotions yeah. such that you're able to run scripts that are more consistent with what you would do. Now, when you're thinking about the ability to say I know that in my ACC, in my anterior cingulate cortex, error is being monitored, then you can say to yourself, look, it's happening. What am I doing right after I've noticed the error? Okay, and there's yeah. a lot. Of, you can buy expensive equipment and put somebody on neurofeedback machine and charge them through the nose and like go to Tahiti on on their insurance payment. <laughs> but it's as simple as the fact that you name to yourself. You put a line in the sand and say, "This is when this happens." And when it does, you're like, "Hey, it happens." Yeah. So, what do you do right after that? When you notice there's an error, do you immediately decide that you're disgusted with yourself and you shame yourself so you can't function? Do you, do you, when you anticipate, and it, it works, anticipating embarrassment also triggers your ACC, okay? So, uh, and this is one of the hypnotic relations we were talking at one point where a hypnotized person shows decreased response in 
in that, that anticipated conflict. Right. So they don't like shut down the rest of their brain in, in a bath of cortisol. Um, but the, the most important thing in all these parts is developing a sense of mastery of how your brain works and developing agency so that you know it's not one big ball of goo. This part in particular is error monitoring. It's the way you learn from rewards. It's when you make a mistake, isolating the mistake from throwing the baby in the bath water out. Yeah, so that's yeah. You know, labeling that part is getting that ability to control that. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's the ACC, and that and I, no, that helps. I mean, because again, I wasn't really familiar with that part and its functions, and so that I can see how understanding what it's responsible for gives you a way to understand like what you should do from there. Like when you recognize it, then do something about it. That's cool. That's cool. All right, gang, that is five different parts of the brain that we've covered uh, in five different videos. Next week, uh, or for those of you who aren't following us on an exact timeline, we are going to have five more videos coming out that are going to look at the electrical, chemical side of how these parts work together and, and make things happen at the electrical, chemical level next. So join us for that. Now, I think that's going to be um, just another step forward in understanding how important this sort of symphony of parts that is the brain is and um, Manny's being awesome teaching us all this stuff and it's very very cool so join us yeah man <laughs> leave comments at hypnoticthoughts.com uh, follow Manny Cyanide at Google Plus Paul yep. Ramsey at Google Plus Mindful360 at Twitter uh, Mindful360.com or is, is yep. there yeah alright and uh and I'm, I'm Paul Ramsey. I'm on Twitter, too. So uh, that's it. I'm Paul Ramsey. I'm Dr. Manny St. Victor. We'll see you guys uh, next time at Hypnotic Thoughts.